The technique we will learn today is gel electrophoresis. Electrophoresis uses an electrical current to separate molecules with different charges. Typically, scientists use electrophoresis to separate and visualize either DNA, RNA, or proteins. So DNA is negatively charged. So when DNA is added to an electric field and placed at the negative end, it's going to migrate towards the positive end. Opposite charges attract. For protein, proteins can have different charges. So in this technique, typically scientists will add SDS in order to impart a negative charge such that when the protein is added to the negative end of a gel, it's able to migrate towards the positive end. In order to achieve this separation, the molecules, DNA, RNA, or protein, are in a gel that is either composed of agarose, and that's typically used to separate molecules of DNA, or uh, polyacrylamide, which is used to separate molecules of protein. So this animation is going to show you how electrophoresis works. We begin by loading our molecules into our gel. And in this example, I'm going to show you DNA gels. So it's going to be comprised of agarose. I load my DNA samples at the negative end. And I include a DNA ladder. Think of a ladder as a ruler to determine the sizes of DNA. When I turn on the power source, my DNA molecules are going to migrate. They're going, because DNA is negatively charged, it is going to migrate towards the positive end of the gel. The agarose is going to separate the molecules according to size. So larger molecules are going to move more slowly in the gel. Hence, they're going to remain at closer to the top of the gel. While shorter molecules are able to move through the agarose much more quickly, and hence uh, they will be more towards the positive end of the gel. The DNA ladder allows us to determine the sizes of our DNA fragments. And when a DNA ladder is added, uh, each band that you see these bands represent the separate DNA molecules, are of a known size. So in my sample, if I see a DNA band here, I can look to the ladder, and seeing that the ladder is 250 base pairs for this band here, I know that the band that I'm seeing in sample number two, this DNA molecule is approximately 250 base pairs long. So this technique allows us to see whether or not there are any molecules present in a sample, and with the use of the latter, allows us to determine the sizes of those molecules. After loading your DNA or your protein and running the gel, we need to have a mechanism to visualize those molecules. And in the case of DNA or RNA, we typically add to our gel a particular stain. And that stain can either be ethidium bromide, which is a potential mutagen, or CyberSafe. Both of these molecules will intercalate or bind to the nucleic acid, such that when you expose your gel to ultraviolet light, any DNA molecules that you'll see as these bands will uh, glow. And again, we have our DNA ladder here, so then that allows us to determine the sizes of our samples. In the case of proteins, we typically use a stain that is known as Kumasi blue. And over time, you will begin to see bands again and these bands are indicative of different proteins. Adding a ladder will allow you to determine the size of each of those protein bands that you see in your gel.
So when preparing a gel, one of the things to consider is the concentration of your gel. If you look at this diagram, you'll see if I change the concentration of agarose, since I'm showing a DNA gel, you'll notice that the spacing of each of the DNA molecules differs. So in this, act, so in this video, I'm going to show you how we prepare a 1% agarose gel. And the first thing to consider is what type of uh, gel cast box are you using. You can have gels that are as small as 50 mils or uh, gels that can be as much as 125 mils. For our example today, we're going to work with a gel that, is, uh, that has a volume of 50 mils. So the first thing to consider is uh, how do I prepare a 1% agarose gel uh, that is 50 mils in volume. So the formula I'm going to use is the percent weight per volume is grams of agarose divided by the volume of running buffer. When gel electrophoresis is performed, you add a running buffer. And in the case of DNA, the running buffer is known as TAE. And this TAE contains trispase, acetic acid, and EDTA. So if I want to prepare a 50 mil gel, I set up my formula as the following. I, have a one, I'm, I want a 1% gel. 1% is the same thing as 0.01. And that's equal to x grams of agarose divided by 50 mils. When I solve for x, I'll see that in order to prepare a 50 mil gel, I will need to add 0.5 grams of agarose. You could do the same technique and the same calculation for polyacrylamide gels if you are performing a protein gel electrophoresis. So now let's look and see how we prepare this gel and how we can visualize DNA using this technique. So to begin making our agarose gel for DNA gel electrophoresis, we begin by measuring out our agarose. And as we saw in the calculation, to make a 50 mil gel, I'm going to need 0.5 grams of agarose. So I have my scale here and my weight boat. So using a spatula, I will measure out 0.5 grams of agarose. I then take my agarose and I will pour it into my container here. And then I have 50 mils of the TAE running buffer. I will add that to my flask. And now I'll put this into the microwave because we need to dissolve the agarose. I'll set it for one minute. And then after 30 seconds, I'm going to stop the microwave, take out uh, my container, look to see if the agarose is being dissolved, and then put it back in for a few more seconds. Thirty seconds has elapsed, and if you look, you can see uh, that there is still powder visible in the container, so the agarose has not completely dissolved. I'll give it a little bit of a mix, and then back into the microwave for about 15 more seconds. Fifteen more seconds has elapsed, and you can see almost all of it is dissolved. There is still a little bit of powder left, so we'll give it another fifteen seconds. Okay. So that has been a full minute, and now if you look, after some of the... Uh, 
smoke moves away, you can see that there is no more powder, hence all of the agarose is now dissolved in my buffer. So the next thing we have to add is the uh, stain that is going to allow us to see our DNA. And for that, we're going to use CyberSafe. The CyberSafe is, let me take it out, the container. Let me show you. So we have CyberSafe. And this is 10,000 times concentrated. So for a 50 mil gel, I'm going to add five microliters of CyberSafe to my um, agarose. The red that you see in the pipette tip is my cyber safe. Okay. And that's going to be added directly into my gel. And then swell to mix it in. You'll now notice that my gel has a, I guess, a light pinkish orange color because of the cyber safe that's been added. Out of the way. Get rid of my tip. Okay. The next thing we have to prepare is the cast. So I have my tray here, and I'm going to add uh, the two ends and snap these into place. I'll put that down. And then I take my comb. The comb is going to allow me to make the wells in my gel. So I'll uh, add in my comb. And then I take my, uh, my, my uh, dissolved agarose here and CyberSafe, and I'm going to pour that into the cast. The two ends that I added to the cast are to uh, make sure that your liquid doesn't just spill all over the place. This will stay out at room temperature for um, at least 10 to 15 minutes, possibly longer, until it hardens. Because CyberSafe is light sensitive, uh, you, what you can do is take a piece of aluminum foil and cover your gel so it can harden without being exposed to light. So let's see if our gel has now solidified. And you can see that it has, and you know, if I touch it, it feels like a very hard jello. Okay, so our gel is ready uh, for the next step. Okay. I'm just gonna cover it while we begin preparing our DNA samples. So here I have a sample of DNA, and I would like to see it uh, or visualize it using agarose gel electrophoresis. In order for this DNA to go into the gel, I have to add what's known as the loading dye. So I have here some DNA loading dye, and this is uh, five times concentrated. So if I want to load 20 microliters of DNA, then I need to use four microliters of my loading dye. I'll take my uh, micropipetter and set it to four microliters. And I'm going to add the loading die to a piece of parafilm. I then readjust my micropipetter for 20 microliters. My micropipetter is now set to 20 microliters, so I will take 
my DNA sample. And I'm going to add it to the parafilm where I just placed the loading die. And I will mix by pipetting up and down. And you want to mix a few times until it looks um, homogeneous and it's all mixed together. So our DNA sample is ready. Now we have to add it to our gel. First thing I need to do is to remove the comb gently. And you can see that I now have wells in my gel. And it is those wells that we're going to add the DNA. So I will remove my two ends. And now there's two ways we can load this. We can either load it dry, where I take my DNA and add it directly into the well. Or I can take my gel, put it into the gel box, add running buffer, and then load the gel that way. Your professor or lab instructor will let you know which method they prefer. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate it the dry method. So I'm going to now take my DNA and I'm going to load it directly into the gel before it goes into the gel box. We've loaded our DNA sample. Now we're going to add our DNA ladder. And the DNA ladder, many of them come commercially prepared and already have the loading die added to it. So here I'm going to add five microliters of my DNA ladder into the next well. So I want to uh, put the pipette tip just uh, at the uh, top of the well here. You don't want to go and stab the gel, otherwise then all the DNA will go out. So just at the top of the well, and then we pipette in. My DNA has now been loaded. Now I can put it into my gel box. Because DNA is negatively charged, I need to have the top of the gel, where my wells are, be at the negative end. And so if we look at this gel box, you'll see the, um, the black wire and the, if I tilt it, also the red wire. So when I put my gel in, I'm going to put my gel in such that the wells are at the negative end, where the black wire is. I take my running buffer and I pour it into the gel box. I then take my gel and I slowly submerge it in. You want to make sure that there is enough running buffer to completely cover the gel. I then take my gel box cover and connect it. So again, black with black and red with red. And then we turn on the power. And we allow this to run until the loading die is approximately halfway through the gel. I can tell that an electric field has been set up by the fact that we see bubbles forming at the positive end of the gel box. 
So we'll let this run until the loading die is approximately halfway, and then we'll take it out and see if we have any DNA present. Our gel has finished running. The loading die has run at least halfway down the gel. So I'll turn off my power. And I will open up the gel box. The bands that you see in the gel show only the movement of the loading die. It is not indicative of DNA being present or absent. It just shows you that an electric field was generated and that the loading die was able to move down the gel. So now, because I've added CyberSafe to the gel, I'm going to add it to a UV table, turn on the light, and if there is any DNA present, we should see some glowing bands each band representing a separate DNA molecule.